Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I want to do today is I want to answer a looming question that I get almost on a daily basis from someone, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, email, YouTube, somewhere almost every day someone asks me the same question. I want to do what you do, how can I do that? <clears throat> okay, kind of a loaded question. But I'm going to give you 10 tips that will help you to... Become your own entrepreneur, if that's the word you want to use, if that's the fancy yuppie term that you want to call it, or work for yourself, which is what I would call the common man terminology. So I'm going to give you 10 tips, and the first five are the most important, but the second five are kind of the icing on the cake. And we can go further into this as a series a little bit if you'd like to, depending on the comments I get from this. Um, but... It's important to get these first 10 out to you really quick first. I'm going to have to put my glasses on here because I can't see as well as I used to. And I actually wrote these bullet points down to talk about with you, okay? So the first one is, I guess we'll segue a little bit to this because I want, to, I want you to understand that, first of all, you have to understand what exactly it is you want. To say, I want to do what you do is not enough. Does that mean you want to run a survival school? Does that mean you want to write books? Does that mean you want to have a YouTube channel that has half a million subscribers? Does that mean you want to do better on Instagram? Does that mean you want to own your own store or your own online business? And in some ways, all of those things are connected, and they have to be if you want to live that ultimate goal of working for yourself. Because really, the biggest thing you need to realize in the world today is that revenue streams are what's important. You can't put all of your eggs in one basket to coin an easy phrase. You can't think that if I have a YouTube channel, if I get a lot of subscribers, if I put a lot of good content up there, and if everybody likes my stuff, I'm going to be making money hand over fist off my YouTube channel, and <clears throat> that's going to last forever because it's not. Things change. Platforms change. The way they do things change. The way they advertise and pay for the advertising changes. And that doesn't really matter where you're at. I'm just using YouTube as an example for that. But you can't rely on one thing to make all your money. If you're going to work for yourself and you're not going to punch a clock every day, and I did it for a long, long time. Worked 12, 14 hours a day. Worked overtime. Punched a clock. Drove an hour and a half one way to work in a Jeep with no top. Even in the wintertime for two years. So I know exactly what it's like to have to do that. And that's why I appreciate so much not having to do that. And that's why I want to tell you how to not have to do that if that's your choice. But realize that making that choice is a difficult one because you have to take it rough for it to get better. It's not going to be jump off and it's great. You can either do it slow like some guys are doing that I know right now, some of the guys that work for me are taking it slow. They're working a full-time job. They're doing the YouTube thing. They're trying to do some other stuff. The problem is the YouTube thing is never going to be enough, and it can never be your sole source of income because it's not a multiple revenue stream type thing unless you've set up multiple revenue streams within your YouTube. This is another conversation altogether where you've got your YouTube set up against an Amazon store, against some places that you're making coupon code money off of. And those are all different little intricacies that you can use to make extra money. But again, it all falls back to YouTube. So your eggs are still in one basket. If something happens to that video or something happens to that platform or something happens to the way they let advertising happen on that platform, all of the rest goes away. So you've made a stair step of dominoes that can tumble on you. So you've got to figure out multiple revenue streams. And for me, it's as simple as spreading yourself out to get money coming in and generated from different locations. I have YouTube. I write books. I write magazine articles. I do personal appearances. I teach classes. I have a retail store. I have an online store. I could go on and on with that because I have a couple paid sponsorships. I have companies that I work for in research, development, advertising that pay me a yearly salary. So all of those things add up to revenue streams that may not be giant amounts or chunks of money in and of themselves, but when you start adding them together, they become what you want. And it takes a long time for that to happen. So the first tip or trick I would give you, and the most simple one is four words. 
Put in the work. It's that simple. Put in the work. That means you got to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, go to bed at midnight, and from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, at least for the first couple, three years probably, you're going to be doing nothing but concentrating on putting in the work, creating these revenue streams. It's not as simple as it used to be. Used to be a lot of people made money off of one revenue stream for their entire life and they could bank on that. The world is changing too fast. Technology is changing too fast for us to do that today. We can't do that. So let's get into it. Put in the work. That's number one. Number two, do not be afraid of making mistakes. Do not be afraid of making mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't care who you are. No one is perfect. Some mistakes are bigger than other mistakes, but everybody makes mistakes. Own it. Forget it. Don't look back. Always look forward. Move on and forget about it. Okay? Everybody makes them. You're going to make mistakes. If you're afraid to fail or you're afraid to do something or you're afraid that if you make a mistake, you're going to become a failure, then you're never going to become a success. It's that simple. All right? And with that, don't be afraid to fail comes things like haters. All right? As you get more popular, you're going to get haters. Even if you've got two videos on YouTube, you're going to have people making comments in your comment section like, you don't know what you're doing. I could do it better. So-and-so's got a video on this from three years ago, and he does it great. You should go watch him. You know what? You should go make your own video and stop commenting on my videos. Two words for you. Delete, block. That's all you need to know, all right? Get rid of the negativity surrounding whatever entity you're trying to accomplish, whether that's a YouTube channel, a blog, Facebook, Instagram. Delete the negativity and get it out of your life so you never have to look at it again. If you leave those comments on there and you're diligent about looking at your comments every day, which you really have to be for at least a long period of time. What I try to do with YouTube and things like that is I try to look at comments the first couple days. And unfortunately for me, it's become so big now that I can't go through every single video and look at every single comment every single day. But I do try to at least be aware of the first couple days of comments, try to give them likes if I can, try to comment back to questions that are asked if they're simple answers. But your time is valuable. We'll get down to that later on, okay? But again, you have to be loyal to your audience, and that's valuable too. We'll talk about that as we go down, all right? So the first one is, do not be afraid to make mistakes. Or the second one is, excuse me, do not be afraid to make mistakes. The first one is, put in the work, all right? Enough said on that. The third one is, be relentless. And when I mean be relentless, I mean that working ethic of get up at 7, go to bed at midnight, put in as much time as you can, dedicated to what you're trying to accomplish during those during that time frame, during that, you know, 7 o'clock to whenever you decide to go to bed. Midnight, 7 hours sleep's enough for anybody, to tell you the truth, if you're really trying to get after this stuff. But be relentless about it. Keep putting up videos. You know, I, I say, I tell people sometimes on YouTube when they ask me about YouTube is, make your money by attrition. If you can't put up one video that becomes viral and gets a million views and makes you, you know, five or $6,000 in the month, then put up 30 videos that get 2,000 views so that that equals 60,000 views or 70,000 views or becomes 100,000 views and eventually becomes a million views. And being relentless and piling it on, eventually you'll figure out what you're good at. You'll figure out, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and you'll figure out what people want to see and you'll figure out what your audience is responding to. And then you'll get more views on your videos or on your Facebook or on your blog. It all works the same. I'm just using YouTube as an example for this because we're on YouTube. All right? Be relentless. Number four, do not compare yourself to other people. Don't sit around and dwell on this guy gets a million views every time he puts a video up. Or this guy's blog has blown up over the last six months. Or this guy's last Instagram went viral and he's got three million views. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't dwell on that. Think about how you can become better yourself. Now, does that mean you shouldn't look at other people's stuff? Absolutely you should, especially in the beginning, because you can look at their formula, figure out what's working for them, and you can try bits and pieces of that, but don't try to imitate it exactly, because it's probably not going to work for you. 
You know, don't say this guy does this, 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 and this in every video, and he gets a million views. So I'm going to make a video and do this, 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 and this, because it may not work for you. So don't compare yourself to others. Figure out what works for you. That doesn't mean not to watch other people and see how they're successful, but don't try to emulate them exactly. And that includes me, for sure. Number five, use social media to your advantage. I see lots of people criticize one type of social media or another. You know, I listened to a guy talk, um, his name was right on the top of my head just a minute ago. Um, <laughs> Vaynerchuk is his last name, Vaynerchuk. I was listening to a talk that he did on YouTube and he was talking to a large group of people and he said that basically 40 seconds out of every minute that's spent on, on phones in general which is always within arm's reach of 95% of the population 24 hours a day, whether you're you know, sleeping, crapping, whatever you're doing, your phone's within arm's reach. And 40 seconds of every minute spent on that phone is dedicated to about eight different platforms. And you can probably guess at least six of them right off the top of your head without even knowing what they are. You can figure that Amazon, eBay, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, there's five right there that I'm on just about every single day. And I'm sure that a lot of other people are too, because I'm no different than most people are. My curiosity puts me to those sites and it does the same thing with other people. So use social media to your advantage means figure out which of those platforms will work for you and spread your stuff out over those platforms. If you post a video to YouTube, post links on your Facebook page. Post links to those videos in different Facebook groups that you belong to. Post a link to that video, or at least a mention that you've put that video up on your blog. Put something about that video being posted on Instagram. These social media crossovers are what you're really looking for to get yourself out there. Whether it's a business, whether it's a school, whether it's a YouTube channel, whether you're trying to sell a product, whatever it is, Use social media to your advantage because it's a well-known fact right now that social media is the biggest advertising avenue in the world right now. Way bigger than television, way bigger than radio, way bigger than anything else, magazines, doesn't matter. Social media is where it's at. That's why every time you scroll through your news feed on Instagram now, you see ads. The same thing on Facebook. You see ads. You see ads popping up on your Facebook for things that you searched yesterday on Google because everything is interactive and you can take advantage of that if you understand how it works. All right. That's the first five. Those are the most simple. Put in the work. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Be relentless with what you do. Don't compare yourself to others and use social media to your advantage. Okay? Those are the top five. Now we'll go through the second five, all right? Find partners that you believe in, okay? If you are trying to do a vlog or you're trying to do a blog on social media or on the web somewhere or you have a social media page that you're trying to get bigger and you're, or you have a YouTube channel that you're trying to make side money off of besides the money that you get from AdSense and things like that, Find companies that you trust to work with. But you have to understand that people, as your channel gets bigger, as your personality gets bigger, as people start to know who you are, you're going to have people throwing products at you. It happens to me every single day. I get an email from some company that wants to send me a free product to try out. You have to be very selective with that, all right? 90% of the time, if I've never heard of the product or never seen it before, I just delete the email. If it's a product that I've seen before, then I might give it some attention at least enough to think about it, research it a little bit, look and see how many people are already using that product on social media places like YouTube and things like that, how many reviews have already been done, because you don't want to just be a redundant reviewer. There's already, you know... 200 reviews on this product and all of a sudden you're going to do a review on it. What makes your review or your perspective any better than someone else's? Unless you're huge, it's not going to make a difference. It's just going to be a redundant review. When it comes to companies that want to, that I want to work with, a lot of times what I will do is I will select the companies myself and I'll select them 
in lots of different ways. I'll select them by gear that I've seen someone else use that I've tried myself or that looked good to me. I'll select them by gear that I already use and I've bought their products several times. And then I think, you know what? This is a good company to work with. I'm going to give them a cold call or I'm going to give them an email and I'm going to send them links to all of my stuff and I'm going to see if they want to work with me. And in the beginning, what I would do with that is once you find a company that you trust, and that's really a key is that you trust a company because if you're just throwing video reviews out there for the sake of reviewing a product, nobody's going to trust what you say because they know you got the product for free. They know you're probably never going to use it again. And they just know it's a BS review that you're trying to use to make a little extra money. And if that's what you want to do, that's okay. But that's not the way I choose to do things. Um, and I'm going to use Grail for an example because I have my Grail sitting here and I'm drinking out of it. But it's, I've worked with companies like Duluth Pack since the very beginning of my career. Tom Sagan at Duluth Pack was the very first guy that ever took a chance on me. And it wasn't very long after he had bought the company. And it wasn't very long after I had started that I made a cold call to Duluth Pack and said, Hey, I got a YouTube channel. I'd like to review one of your packs. What do you think about that? But give me your address, I'll send you one. And since then, I've had a long-standing relationship with Tom because I trust his product. I've used his product for years. I still use it to this day. And so I'm going to use Grail for an example here because Grail was a product that I looked at at a trade show. Not once, but twice. Then I spoke to the owners of the company. I researched the company. I wanted to see what they were all about and how... They, what their story was. And a story with a company is important. You know, if it's just somebody who's bringing something from overseas, they have no design intent, they have no design say-so in the way the company, the product's made, they're just bringing some stove over from China that they saw on Alibaba or something and they're trying to rebrand it with their logo on it and sell it. You know, that product is going to be okay. It might be a great product. But it's not going to be something that I want to put my name on because there was no input from the company's founder. And I like to connect with the companies that I work with. And I have to believe that the product is the best type of product on the market in that type product. And so when you look at filtration products, there's lots of filters out there on the market today. There's very few of them, or there's only a few of them, that will remove viruses. And so to me, that makes a big deal. There's also... None of them that work the way the Grail does, where you just fill it up, push the filter unit down, and within five or six seconds, you have drinkable water. I'm not going to go through all of the blah, blah, blah with the Grail right now. It's not a Grail review video. What I'm saying to you is that it's a product that I picked up because I believed in it. It's a product that I think works for me. It's a product that I think will work for people. And as far as a travel water bottle goes... Yes, I'm always going to carry stainless steel stuff with me so I can boil water if I have to. But walking around the town where I'm going to be grabbing water out of taps and faucets and wells and pumps and things like that, this thing is the cat's. And so to me, that got me interested. All right. So find products that you believe in and work with them. Don't review or work with companies or take endorsements to companies for products you're going to use one time, toss it in the side, and never use it again. Because then your reviews will become non-believable and nobody will trust them and becoming a trusted reviewer is important okay as well as if you're trying to sell those products later down the line um so number seven and i apologize if this video is getting drug out a little bit but i think it'll be worth it to you um write constantly and become published in one way or another and when i say that you can look at any magazine on any rack in walmart a bookstore, a Barnes & Noble, wherever it's at, you can look in the back of the magazine, you can find the publisher's contact information, you can find the publisher online, find their contact information, find the editor's contact information, and cold email them. Say, hey, you know, I do this, or I do that, or I'm really good at this one thing. And finding what you're good at is an important aspect of this. You know, I'm really good at making primitive fire. That's my that's, that's what I key in on the most. I'm the greatest at that. I can make a hand drill. I can make a bow drill. I can make a fire plow. You know, I can start fire with two sticks. No problem. Write about it. Write about it and find a company that will pick up your articles. There are lots and lots of media sources out there still in written form, like magazines, like spaces, blog space on the web, that will buy the written word from you, okay, or the typed word nowadays, all right? 
that will get your name out there. It will get you published and it will lead to bigger things down the road like books. All right. The self-publishing route, you can go that with books if you want to, but you're not going to get the distribution that you would get from a, an actual publisher like my publisher, Simon & Schuster. But also, don't take anything that comes down the pike, okay? Don't be afraid to leave money on the table. And I think that kind of goes in with... Um, it, it kind of goes in with what we talked about a minute ago with the reviews and things like that. You know, a personal story I'll tell you is I turned down a publishing deal for $50,000 up front, up front for a book because I had already published two books with Simon & Schuster and Adams Media. I was loyal, and that's important, is to be loyal to the people that you work with. I was loyal to that company. I didn't want to publish with another company and you know, have them say, well, why did you do that when we've already published two of your books? Why wouldn't you come to us with an idea for another book? And so I turned that deal down. And I'm glad I did because as I researched the publisher and looked at some of the other books they've published, wasn't my cup of tea per se, all right? So that takes care of that. Now, number eight, find what works for you and exploit that, all right? If you start to post things all over the place and you find out that all of a sudden you're look you're keeping track of what's going on. You're looking at your Instagram for the next subscriber every five minutes to figure out where you're at. And all of a sudden your Instagram jumps 200 subscribers in a week, but your YouTube only jumps five subscribers in a week or only gets 50 views on your last video that you did last week, then exploit Instagram. All right. Pound Instagram. And use Instagram as a segue to get people to watch more of your videos, to get people to look at the things you're publishing on your blog. That's what you want to do. Exploit what works for you. Figure out what method you've done or what thing you've put time into that's working for you and exploit that to its most prolific potential. That's the way you want to do it, okay? Number 10, the last one, okay? And this is important to understand, all right? No matter what you do, from the beginning to the end of your career, your time is worth money. It becomes worth more money as time goes by, as you get bigger, as you have more influence, as your social media channels grow larger, your time is worth more money. But your time is always going to be worth money. It's either worth money because you're not getting paid a salary anymore and you have to make every second count as dollars coming in, or it's worth money to you because somebody's asking you to do something for them and you have to give up something else to do that. A good example of that is things like television. Television will take anywhere from four to six months to film a series on television, two to three weeks a month, probably two weeks a month of filming and travel. And those two weeks cost you two weeks of time that you could be making YouTube videos, posting on Facebook, writing, posting on Instagram, all of the things that are revenue streams for you now, you have to give those up two weeks out of the month to go do this. Is there an offset there? Is the money you're going to make from this equal to this or more? Or is there going to be a payoff in the back end of this that's going to offset the loss I'm taking right here? You want to think about those things because everything looks shiny on the surface sometimes and it's not necessarily so. And a lot of things have to do with timing. Okay? So... Before you decide to do something that's dangled in front of you like a carrot, think about what it's going to cost you over here in time and money before you take a hold of this one, all right? It's, you got to kind of be like a monkey. Don't let go of one branch until you got a firm hold on the other and you have a firm understanding of what that's going to do for you. Because if that branch is weak and it breaks off and you've already let go of this one, you're going to the ground. Understand that. It's important, okay? Sorry I drug this out so long. I hope those 10 tips help you. We can do longer videos on certain topics within this if you want to later. But for now, I just wanted to give you that because it's a question I've been getting for the last five to six years on a continual basis. And my goal is to help everyone do well. Right? I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of my sponsors, my instructors, all my affiliates, and all my friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.